Details about the Tree of Life that many people do not know. Number 1. The Tree of Life was planted by God. Genesis 2.9 depicts the Tree of Life in the Garden of Eden alongside another divine tree, the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. Genesis 2.9, New King James Version. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Number 2. Adam and Eve were originally free to eat from the tree of life. It would have been easy for Adam and Eve to reach the tree of life if it had been located in the center of the garden. Adam was not forbidden from eating from the tree of life. After the serpent had spoken to Eve, additional information regarding the tree of life is provided. Number 3. The tree of life was blocked after the fall. Later it's revealed that the serpent that appeared to Eve was Satan himself. Eve is tempted to eat from the tree of good and evil. Shame and fear were the first effects of sin. The Lord God cursed the serpent to degradation, disgrace and defeat. Sin has inevitable consequences. She was sentenced to suffer in childbirth. She would be subject to her husband. The man was sentenced to earn his livelihood from a ground cursed with thorns and thistles. It means toil and sweat for him. Then at the end of life, he would return to dust. Genesis 3, 22-24 New King James Version Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Number 4. The tree of life was blocked after the fall. The only appropriate reaction for God to have to the sin committed by the couple is to expel them from Eden. In the event that they chose to stay, there is a possibility that they'd be able to eat the fruit that grows on the tree of life, which will enable them to live without end. Given their current condition, Eating from the tree would be more of a curse than a blessing at this point. Under the terms of a future new covenant, the possibility of eternal life will be made manifest. Since the first human couple, and by extension all subsequent generations of humans, were cast out of Eden, this state of exile has come to define life. After they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, it's unknown whether Adam and Eve harbored any desire to return there. They may have feared that if they left the garden, they would never see God again, because that was the only place they had ever met him before. As a result of his disobedience, Adam lost his eternal life. The tree of life in Eden must have had some role to play in maintaining the life of Adam and Eve. Genesis 3.24 says, He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed the cherubim, and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. There was only one side of Eden that was guarded according to this verse, the east side of Eden. The emphasis is that God completely protected the tree of life from any humans who would approach it. Whether the intended idea is protecting the edge or protecting the location of Eden, God's word emphasizes that Adam and Eve were removed from the Garden of Eden unable to return. Number 5. Prohibition from the Tree of Life was an act of kindness. Because God was aware that life on earth would be fraught with suffering and toil, he made the kind decision to set limitation on the amount of years that people could live on earth. This limit was set. To live eternity in a sinful state would mean endless agony for humanity, with no hope of the relief that comes with death. By limiting our lifespan, God gives us enough time to come to know Him and His provision for eternal life through Christ, but spares us the misery of eternal existence in a sinful condition. God's great love led to the provision of a Savior who would rescue a lost and corrupted humanity. Because of the actions of one man, 
namely Adam, sin entered the world. However, because of the actions of another man, namely Jesus Christ, redemption and forgiveness of sin are now available to all people. Romans 5.17, New King James Version For if by the one man's offence death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Adam's disobedience doomed not only himself, but also the entire human race. Mankind's DNA contains the cycle of sin and decay. Number 6. The Tree of Life appears again in the Book of Revelation. The only place in the New Testament where the Tree of Life is mentioned is the Book of Revelation, and each time it is mentioned, the phrase does have a cosmic and spiritual significance. There is a promise made in Revelation 2.7, which states that the one who overcomes will receive the gift of eating the fruit of this tree, which is said to be located in the paradise of God. There will be no restriction on eating fruit from the same tree that Adam and Eve ate in the Garden of Eden on the new earth. Revelation 2.7, New King James Version He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. After describing the river of life in this book of Revelation, the Apostle John goes on to mention another remarkable aspect of the scene. Number 7. The tree of life provides healing of the nations. Those who avail themselves of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross will be resurrected to see the tree of life again, for it stands in the middle of the holy city, the new Jerusalem, where it bears twelve crops of fruits. Revelation 22.2, New King James Version. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruits every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The Bible opens with a description of the tree of life. Now we see the tree of life again. It's a little difficult to picture this picturesque scenery in our minds. It's possible that when John talks about a large street, he's referring to one that has a river running down the middle of it, and that there's a large tree or series of trees that grow with their roots on either side of the river. The reappearance of the tree of life is indicative of the complete restoration of all things. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The word for healing in Greek is therapeian, and it's from this word that we get the English word therapeutic. The Greek word is almost directly translated into English. In the eternal state, the curse will be no more. Access to the tree of life will be restored, and darkness will be gone forever. Eden will be restored. In heaven... There is no more curse. Since the fall, man and creation have lived with the effect of the curse described in Genesis 3. In the new heaven and new earth, they are done away with forever. In a place of the curse, the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. This is one interesting exchange. Heaven will be where God's people can continue serving and working for Him. On the other hand, this depicts the pure blessedness of service rather than the laborous, curse-stained toil. Heaven will be located where the people of God are able to see God's face, a place where they can have a close, personal fellowship with God. 